one does not simply walk into Mordor. The Land of Shadow. Welcome everybody. Uh, today's uh, shadow cast is going to be a lore video where we focus on the dark cult of Morgoth. Um, we're going to look at its origins uh, and how it evolved over the course of the second and third ages. Um, but before I get, begin, I did want to make mention that it looks uh, terribly windy and stormy out today. Um, it, it looks a bit like the Ford Waith uh, in the far north of Middle Earth. Um, and I, I need my cup of coffee to keep warm. Um, but I also did want to make mention that it is also the 20th anniversary uh, last week of uh, the premiere of The Two Towers, which came out in 2002. And if you want to know more about that or see a lot of our postings, you can go to www.thelandofshadow.com uh, and you can find a link to that below. So, if everybody's ready, let's put on our dark cloaks and seek out the evil cult of Morgoth. The worship of Melkor Morgoth, otherwise known as Melkorism in Tolkien canon, began after the fall of Morgoth in the Second Age. After forging the rings, Sauron attacked and destroyed Eregion. His forces then moved north to Linden, but Numenor came to the aid of the elves, defeating Sauron, who then withdrew back into Mordor. For a time, Sauron was hidden as he gathered new strength in Mordor. Numenor established settlements along the coast of Middle-earth in the lands of Harad. The armies of Mordor, however, plagued those settlements until ar Farazan sent forth another vast fleet to the shores of Middle-earth to assail Sauron. The fleet was so mighty that Sauron decided to surrender rather than fight and have his armies destroyed. Sauron allowed himself to be captured and taken back to Numenor, using deception to destroy the island kingdom rather than by force of arms. The majority of what Tolkien wrote about the worship of Morgoth comes primarily from the Silmarillion. He was vague about what Sauron began cultivating in this dark religion. But it does state clearly that Sauron convinced ar Farazan and the Numenorians to begin worshipping Morgoth. These are Sauron's words. Darkness alone is worshipful, and the Lord thereof may yet make other worlds to be gifts to those who serve him so that they increase their power and shall find no end. And Erepharazan said, Who is the Lord of the darkness? Sauron lied to the king, saying, It is he whose name is not now spoken. For the Valar have deceived you concerning him. Putting forward the name of Eru, a phantom devised in the folly of their hearts, seeking to enchain men in servitude to themselves. For they are the oracle of this Eru, who speaks only when they will. But he that is their master shall yet prevail, and he will deliver you from this phantom, and his name is Melkor, Lord of all, Give her a freedom, and he shall make you stronger than they. So spoke Sauron to Ar-Pharazan. 
In essence, the teaching of Melchorism preaches that Melchor and the darkness are supreme in the world, and that the Valar invented Eru Ivatar to be a false god, and they use it to control men and keep them from reaching their full potential. It also seems that the Numenorians believed that Morgoth would release them from death and give them the immortality that Ivatar and the Valar denied them. So were the lies of Sauron. Tolkien provided very few specifics about Melchorism, or the worship of Morgoth. By the end of the Second Age and the Third Age, it is likely that the majority of men in Arda worshipped Morgoth though in truth they were controlled by Sauron. Numenor was now split in its beliefs. The king's men worshipped Morgoth and followed Sauron, while the faithful held true to the Valar. In time, the majority of Numenor fell into the worship of Morgoth. A great temple was built. A circular building with a great dome open on the top. The center of the dome was left open, and from this opening the smoke of the temple's altar rose into the sky. The first offering in this temple was Nimloth, a tree from Valinor given to the Numenorians by the elves. Afterwards, humans were sacrificed in the temple usually the faithful, but also the low men of Middle-earth. It's possible that human sacrifice remained part of Melchorism in later ages and in other places. The black Numenorians were said to practice dark sorcery, and they likely used the power of Melchorism to feed their dark arts. In the Second Age, Sauron presented himself as a representative of Morgoth. However, by the end of the Third Age, Sauron claimed that he was the origin of the darkness and that the people should worship him as a deity. Through this religious cult, Sauron controlled the minds and hearts of the majority of men in Middle-earth. Amazon's The Rings of Power has taken the vague origins of Melchorism and set its beginnings at the end of the First Age, as a defense if Morgoth were to fall. When the show begins, the cult of Morgoth, or the Goths as I affectionately call them, are centered in the show in the far east in the lands of Rhun. I expect in Season 2 we will see it spread and finally come to the shores of Numenor. It appears thus far to be an all-female cult, but so far we have only seen three of its acolytes, the ascetic, the nomad, and the dweller. The ascetic carries the star map on a silver tray and appears to be the carrier of the knowledge. The nomad seems to be the warrior of the group, being skilled in the use of sickles as weapons. And finally, we have the dweller, who is the sorcerer of the trio of cultists. She has the power to call forth the flame of Udun. The series appears to be tying together several plot lines regarding Sauron his exploration of what they call the Unseen World, which is what we know as the Wraith World, eventually to be inhabited by the Nazgul. The writers of the show are weaving this into the creation of the Rings of Power and the use of dark sorcery by the cultists of Morgoth, who appear to be able to call forth the fires used by the Balrog. In the climatic ending battle between the stranger and the Goths, they turn into moths that fly away. 
I don't believe they were destroyed in this encounter, but will reappear in the second season of the show. At least that's my thought. I believe in season two we will see the Goths come to the shores of Numenor and aid Sauron in the deception of Ar Farazan with their use of dark magic. This is an interesting storyline I am interested in seeing evolve in the show. I can't wait to see what happens to the cult of Morgoth in the new series. Okay, everybody, that ought to wrap up today's lore video. I uh, just wanted to make mention one more time of our website, thelandofshadow.com, which you can check out in the links below. Uh, on our site, you can explore all things dark in Tolkien's Middle Earth. Uh, we have the Dark Servants of Shadow, uh, the uh, Dark Domains, the Brazen Beasts. You can learn all about the Black Speech and much, much more on the site. Uh, so please go ahead and check it out. And if you want to, you can follow the link below um, and follow us also on and follow the Land of Shadow on Twitter and on uh, Instagram. And let me know in the comments section below if you would like to see uh, some more door videos on TikTok. Anyway, um, uh, don't forget to like this video if you like the content today and uh, click on uh, our subscribe button if you haven't yet done so. Um, so I hope you guys stay warm in this bitter cold weather we're experiencing here uh, in the US. And for those of you around the world who might be watching, wherever you are, stay warm. Uh, and uh, so until next time, uh, let's go ahead and explore the dark fortress of a tomb which was the vast stronghold.